My guest today is Whitney Griffith. Whitney, how are you? Hey, David. I'm great. How are you doing? I'm doing excellent. I'm enjoying, I'm enjoying my first ever trip to Amsterdam. Yes, I'm enjoying it too. <laughs> yeah, first time? Yeah, first time. Uh, welcome. Yeah. Uh, tell me about uh, your job. What do you do? I, have, yeah. I hear you have a cool job. <laughs> okay, it is really cool. I'm a software engineer at Microsoft, and I work on the commercial software engineering team, uh -huh. where I focus on blockchain and data with Microsoft's top 400 customers, where we try to um, drive engagements around incorporating blockchain in whatever solution that they or problem they may have. That's yeah. pretty cool. I, I, I keep hearing about blockchain, yeah. but other than like the Bitcoin stuff, I don't hear a lot of practical stuff that people are doing with blockchain, okay. but you actually are working with customers yeah. and implementing solutions. Yeah, at the enterprise level too, which is pretty cool to That's me. That's exciting. <laughs> yeah. Um, I started this job three months ago, and so far I've been mind blown in regards to the toolkits that are available to actually implement um, blockchain related solutions in an enterprise setting. And what blockchain is exactly yes. and how I like to define it is it's a distributed ledger. Pretty much um, we all know what a ledger is, hopefully, <laughs> or if you don't, it's just like a record of transactions per se. Okay. And this ledger is distributed among a network. It could be a network of you and I, or mm -hmm. it could be of like among a lot of companies, a lot of nodes, members, anyone who joins this network, they have access to this ledger. Okay. And they have access to the, the live updated version of ledger and they could actually participate in the um in ensuring that the ledger isn't compromised, right? Okay. Based on whatever rules is set that the network created. Okay, and I think, if, as I understand it, this is distinguished from a lot of transaction systems where instead of having one person or one company or one system in charge, everybody's kind of in charge. That's yeah. why it's distributed, right? Um, yes, and like how I like to put it as well is I everyone has been in like a group text, and in this group text, everyone is present. You may not know who every phone number belongs to, but one that once someone sends a message in the group text. There's no way for you to withdraw that message. Mm. There's no way to refute that that message didn't come from a person with this phone number mm. or a name. And yeah, everyone sees it. It's distributed immediately. Okay. <laughs> yeah. All right, well, let's talk. Uh, I want to talk about Azure because I know okay. you've been doing a lot of work with Azure. Yeah. And, um, and you were telling me earlier about some of the tools yeah. in Azure that help you with blockchain. Yes. Okay. Azure Blockchain as a Service is a cloud solution where Azure enables you and your network of part members to create a consortium that is built upon the Quorum blockchain, which is a private um, Ethereum blockchain within Azure. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you go into Azure, you create an Azure blockchain as a service um, resource, and you can invite as much members as you like to the Azure blockchain as a service. And every member within the Azure as a blockchain as a service have equal rights per se okay. and together collectively every person who is a part of the consortium will come up with different business rules or different um different logic around what is the use case they created this blockchain for okay. and the logic that you, you <laughs> the logic that you um you create you have a lot of different tools within Azure that you can leverage to execute that serverlessly. Yeah. So mm. an example tool is Azure Logic Apps. Right? Oh, okay. So uh, so Azure Logic Apps. Um, we've actually done a show on that, but they yeah. interact with blockchain as a service, correct? Yeah, they don't interact directly with blockchain as a service. They interact with smart contracts. So oh. the Logic App team have created an Ethereum um, connector mm -hmm. where um, in the Azure blockchain as a service or any, let's say, any blockchain where you execute a smart contract and you publish it within the, um, the blockchain, you get returned a smart contract address mm -hmm. as well as you have the connection to that blockchain. And connection what, strings to the what's blockchain. What's a smart contract address? A smart contract address is pretty much that um, pointer to where that smart contract lies within okay. the blockchain network, okay. wherever yeah. it was deployed. And what is Ethereum? Ethereum is a type of blockchain. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So help me understand this architecture here. We've got we're blockchain as a service, and then this ledger is somehow um, hosted on this service inside of Azure. Is that the idea? Even though it's serverless, uh, they're it's keeping track of the state of these transactions in that ledger. Is that is that if I got that right? So how it's made up? Um, so blockchain 
let's say the blockchain is pretty much a ledger that keeps track of transactions mm -hmm. and the ledger is stored in some sort of computing power whether it's a vm or so forth okay i'm not particularly sure on what is running on the back end okay. but in azure blockchain as a service when once you spin up your own instance of a blockchain as a service mm -hmm. um the azure blockchain as a service team <laughs> they create a bunch of different nodes according to your specifications okay. computing um power to be able to like continuously run and support your ledgers yeah. okay so there's some stateful information that has to be maintained and that's yeah. what the service provides is that yes. stateful information yes it's okay. purely managed on the azure end oh okay all right and then uh, somehow those contracts are communicating with logic apps yeah to do so that. okay let's say in azure blockchain as a service um point of view so we have a blockchain deployed in azure blockchain as a service and uh, we created a smart contract for let's say sending sending token a mm -hmm. to someone right okay. so we have a contract that so maybe just you, i want to uh, transfer money yeah. from your account to my account that's yes. a good scenario yes yes that's a great <laughs> that'd be a good, to, a good uh, transaction so <laughs> we have a smart contract that purely um transfers tokens from one account to another account okay. right and we created a smart contract we created it in solidity and we deployed it to the blockchain mm. that specific blockchain that we created in azure mm. once it's deployed there we get returned a smart contract address where the the smart contract sits within the blockchain in azure mm. once once we have that information and we have the connection string for the um the specific azure blockchain as the service node okay. or member we can then go into Azure Logic App. We can um, power up an Ethereum connector and we could configure the correct connector to point directly to our specific Azure Blockchain as a Service member node. Um, mm -hmm. We add our smart contract address and we are able to run or trigger functions within that smart contract that we created to pretty much execute the transaction for me to send money from account to another account. All right. All yeah. right. Uh, so excuse me if I ask them uh, yeah. silly questions, but this is all new to me. Okay. Um, it, when you say trigger a function, yeah, the, is that is that a, a web service call of some kind, or how does that get triggered? So I think we should scale back in terms of discussing smart contracts. Yes, please. So in the Ethereum um, network, a smart contract is an entity in itself, which is a self-executing function okay that's like a, a pretty simple way to think of it and within this smart contract self-executing function you can have multiple functions just think of like a java class or a c plus plus class right okay where you have the constructor you have a lot of um sub functions within it and each function have a different role so let's say in our um dummy smart contract which is sending token a mm -hmm. <laughs> tokens from account A to account B, we have a function that says account balance, right? And this account balance, pretty much, you take a parameter for the account address, right? Or your account information, and you want returned, uh, um, you want returned how much money is in that account. Hmm. So that is one function that exists in the smart contract. Okay. So now this smart contract was deployed to the blockchain, and when I say I trigger that function, it means actually calling the smart contract and telling the smart contract to run um, the function that is specific to trying to find how much money is in the account. Okay, yeah. interesting. Tell me about uh, one of the enterprise solutions that you've built for one of your customers. Okay. Um, one of the solutions we built was an industry-wide mobility as a service platform. And uh, this solution was created because our customer was in a country that it's the transport industry is pretty fragmented oh, okay. right so what that meant is to get from point a to point b a person will have to like transfer between two plus different tra train companies mm -hmm. may need to jump into a taxi or they need um to rent a car or something like that sure. but the problem is in the transport industry in this specific country there's over a thousand plus different providers wow. and what that equated to is 
if that one person wants to get to from point A to point B, they will end up having to buy multiple tickets. They will end up having to like um, scan at multiple locations and actually like rotate different stops pretty much. Okay. Right. So the whole goal was to create a unified platform where all the different transport providers and any other person, any other provider that engages in the whole transit process can come into a consortium and be able to benefit the end user. Hmm. In, and the goal was that the end user is now able to like route their path okay. to get from point A to point B. They get generated um, a single ticket that represents the multiple tickets that they would have had before to get between the different transport providers, as well as we were able to incorporate insurance in it, <laughs> right? Oh, so even yeah. other industries. We had other industries as well. And the insurance came in where um, let's say one of something happened with one of the providers. Let's say one of the trains were delayed, and this person buy a high premium um, insurance to protect their their route just because they know they had to get to point B at X amount of time because they had a really important meeting. Okay. So the insurance were kicking in the sense that they will now pretty much ref, not refund, but they will give their ticket will get extended in such a way that they can now um, take an alternate route. Okay. They can leave the train station and go to get a, a cab, for instance, right. without having to um, to worry about, oh, I just wasted my money, yeah. I just wasted my time, and still hopefully reach in time for their meeting. So yeah. I, I like this, uh, this scenario because you've, you've, you're, you've had a lot of disparate systems trying to talk to each other. And yes. like apparently in this country, there didn't exist uh, a common trusted source Yes. To manage all that. Yeah. And so the blockchain became that trusted source, or they yeah. trusted each other. Indeed. So it, let's say if we didn't have the blockchain, how someone will have solved this issue will have been to create like a a, a, a new company, a new entity yeah. that will be the, the manager of this sort of like relationship uh, between the different providers. And everybody have to trust that. Exactly. System. We'll have to trust that system. But because of the existence of blockchain, Every provider, everyone who wanted to take part in this mass platform was able to come together at the same time and from day one pretty much have a say in how this how this solution will be implemented, how ah. this solution will be delivered and their role in it. Very yeah. cool. I'm curious, when uh, in this solution, did the customer come to you and say they wanted to use blockchain or did you did they describe the problem and you suggested this is a good fit for blockchain? So I actually joined this project really late. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. So maybe you don't know the answer yeah. to this question. Um, but as I think my best guess will be our um, the person the customer came to, he was very familiar with blockchain and uh -huh. based on like the whole problem in this specific country and the whole goals of mobility as a service, he saw that blockchain will be the a good solution to explore to implement this okay and yeah. he was right and he was right <laughs> i just yeah. uh, sometimes uh, uh, something that's as popular as as blockchain which has sort of become a buzzword yeah people think it's the silver bullet which will solve everything yes and it, it, it's, uh, <laughs> uh, it, it's misused sometimes right? yeah <laughs> sorry um okay well um that's, that's great where are you headed to next um, back to San Francisco, yes. That's a great city. <laughs> but I'm enjoying Amsterdam as long as I'm here. Do you have an online presence? Yes, you can find me on any platform at Impact Wit. Yeah. Impact Wit. Yes. Yeah. Whitney, thank you so much. Yes, thank you so much for the interview. <laughs> Hey friends, let's impact others with technology. <laughs>